Hey, it's math time. You ready to add and subtract? There are a whole lot of numbers. We're getting smarter with every math fact. Hey, I'm glad you're with me for math. Well, today we're going to do something a little bit different. We're starting a new unit. And at the beginning of this unit, we need to learn about something called tables. Now, we are not talking about a table that you would eat your dinner on. No, 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 no. Instead, we're talking about tables that contain information or data that tell us things and can help us to answer questions. So today we're going to be categorizing different kinds of animals. Let's talk about the different kinds of animals that we are going to be categorizing today. Today we're going to be talking about birds. Now, there are special things about birds that make them different from other types of animals. Birds have wings, birds lay eggs, birds have two legs, Birds have feathers and they are warm-blooded. Now, the next type of animal we're going to be talking about today and categorizing on our tables are the reptiles. So, there are things about reptiles that make them different than other types of animals. Reptiles have scales, they have dry skin, they usually lay eggs, they sometimes have four legs or else they have no legs at all and they are cold-blooded. All right, the next type of animal that we're gonna talk about today, mammals. Mammals have either hair or fur. Their mothers feed the babies milk. They give birth to live babies. They have lungs and they are warm-blooded. And the last type of animal that we're going to be talking about today and categorizing are fish. Fish have scales and fins and gills, not lungs. And fish lay eggs and they are cold-blooded. Now, so that you can follow along and do this activity with me, will you please go get either a paper and pencil or a whiteboard and a whiteboard marker, something to write with. Ready? Go. Okay, here we go. Let's draw a table to classify some animals. Now, the first thing we're going to do is draw a nice, big, large rectangle on our paper or writing surface. And we need to split this rectangle into some rows so that we have space to work. So I'm going to need four different rows. We're going to have four different categories that we're dividing these animals up into today. So there's one, two, three and four. Now, I am going to need two different sections. I need a section where I write the things that I am categorizing, the types of animals, so mammal and so forth, and I need a section to put my data, my numbers, my tally marks, however I'm keeping track of my information. So I'm just going to cut it like this. Here we go, down from top to bottom, and now I have two different sections. This section over here is where we're going to write our different categories. So we are going to have birds. We talked about reptiles, mammals, and we also talked about fish. Okay, now before we start, let's finish this up by adding a title to it. Whenever you're making a table and you're going to display data, you're going to need to have a title. So let's just name this Animal Categories. Okay, go ahead and get your table all filled out like mine and then we'll start tracking our animals and seeing how many we have in each one of these different categories. Okay, here we go. Our first animal is a, oh, a penguin. Where do you think penguin goes in our table? Yeah, he's a bird. Now today we're going to keep track of these animals using tally marks. So I'm just going to put one tally in the bird row right here. Our next animal is a clownfish. And fish is in the name, so we know that that is a fish. 
Now we're going to be looking at, oh, polar bear, isn't he adorable? Where do you think polar bear would go? Well, we know he's not a bird or a fish. Now, let's see here. Is he a reptile? Does he have scales? Definitely not. There's fur on that polar bear. And we know that polar bears give birth to live babies. This polar bear is a mammal. Okay, now we're looking at a barn owl. Where would this barn owl go? Correct, it is a bird. And now a green snake. Reptile. Ooh, yay, we finally have one in the reptiles category. Ooh, our next animal is a seahorse. Where do you think a seahorse would go? Yeah, a seahorse is a fish, not a mammal. Okay, now we're looking at an arctic fox. It has fur. Mmm, that tells us something, doesn't it? An arctic fox is a mammal. Great. Now we're looking at a bottlenose dolphin. Where do you think a dolphin goes? Yeah, so a dolphin is a hard one because it is not actually a fish. A dolphin breathes air through its blowhole and it has lungs and it gives birth to live babies. Therefore, a dolphin falls into the mammal category. Good, now we're looking at a brown bear, also fur. Boop, we have a lot of mammals piling up here. Oh, and a rabbit, isn't he adorable? Where do you think the rabbit goes? Good, you're right, rabbit goes in the ma mammal category, but I'm not just gonna keep making tallies across like this. When we are making tallies, after we get four and we need to add a fifth one, we always go across like this in order to tie them together so we have a nice, neat group of five. This makes it easier for us to count our tallies if we have a lot of them. We can just count by fives instead of by ones. Okay, now let's see. Our next animal is a leopard gecko. Where would he land? Yeah, he's got scales and he's cold-blooded. He's a reptile. And a green iguana. Another reptile. Okay, now we have a California Mountain King snake. Yes, snakes are reptiles. They do not have any legs and they lay eggs and they have scales. Okay, let's see. Now we're looking at a bull shark. Where do you think bull shark goes? Now, a bull shark is a hard one, and sometimes people get them mixed up and think that they're like dolphins, so they put them in the mammal category, but no, sharks are fish. Sharks do not have lungs, they have gills. Okay, now we have a little tiny brown field mouse. It's got fur, it feeds its baby's milk, it is a mammal, and a a robin. Let's see where a little robin redbreast would go. Of course, in the bird category. All right, we're doing great. Now we have a rooster. Oh my goodness. Where do you think the rooster goes? That's right, it's a bird. If you got that one wrong, I just might cry. Okay, now we have an orca whale. And an orca whale is kind of special, and it's one we have to think about. Is it a mammal like a dolphin, or is it a fish? Well, since orca whales have a blowhole, and since they give birth to live babies that sometimes weigh 400 pounds, that tells us that the orca whale is actually a mammal and not a fish. All right, and next we have a sea turtle. They are actually reptiles. Ooh, look, we had four, but we need to add another one. So don't forget to tie it into a group of five. Now you may notice that sometimes I tie mine in, in going across like this, or I tie it going the other way. It doesn't matter which way you put the fifth line to make it a group of five, as long as you remember to do that so that it's quicker to count later. Alrighty, our last animal is a baby harp seal, and they have fur, and their babies are born alive, and they drink their mommy's milk, so it must be a mammal. Very good. Now let's take a look at this and see if we can tally up or add up all of our creatures that we have categorized today. So let's take a look here. In the bird section we have four. Easy to count my reptiles since I made this group of five here. Now over here in the mammals I can see that I have five plus three and five plus three is eight. And then for fish just three. So, let's take a look. Which animal category had the most animals in it? Yes, the mammals did. That's correct. And which one had the least? Fish. Very good. This is pretty quick to read once we get it, all of our tallies in and then we add up our totals. Now, what if I asked you how many animals were categorized all together? Yeah, you may be thinking, Eats, I don't know what to do here. Well, all together is your clue. If I say all together, that means add every single one of these up. So we're going to go four plus five, which is nine. Nine, ooh, I know that nine plus three is 12. 
And 12 plus 8 is 20. Ooh la la! There were 20 animals altogether. Now what if I asked you this? What if I said, how many more mammals were there than reptiles? How would you figure that out? So I'm trying to figure out how many extra mammals there were, how many more mammals there were than reptiles. So you could do a couple different things. You could go ahead and subtract this. So of course when you were subtracting the biggest number goes on top. So I could go 8 minus 5 and that's a difference of 3. Or I could just look. Look at this here. This is where they're the same and this is how many more mammals there are than reptiles and gee look, it's three. Or some people like to use their fingers and count up from the small number to the large number and they would go five, six, seven, eight. Mm, again, we get three. So there are three more mammals than reptiles that we categorize today. Now, what if I said how many less fish were there than birds? How many less fish were there than birds? What would your answer be? Did you say one? Yeah, that just means to subtract. You're going to go four minus three. And we know that four minus three is a difference of one. Very good job. Now, we're going to go ahead and make a different table, but using the same animals. Here we go. All right, there are three different habitats that we're going to look at. And when you're making a table, you always are going to need to title it. So let's just start off by titling our table. Let's write animal, A-N-I-M-A-L, habitats, H-A-B-I-T-A-T-S. And then we're going to draw our table by, again, making a rectangle. But this time we're going to draw our table a little bit differently. Last time we drew the categories over here and then we put our tallies this way. This time we're going to put our categories up top. We're going to put our tallies and our numbers down below. So we're going to look at the Arctic habitat. Go ahead and write that in your first column there. And then we're going to look at the woodlands. I'll write that in my second column, and then we're going to talk about the ocean habitat. I'm writing that in my third column. Okay, now, as soon as you get those all filled in, we'll be ready. We're going to start off by tallying them, again, like we did last time. And remember, if you have four tallies and you need to make a fifth one, you got to tie that guy across and make a group of five. All right, here we go. We have the penguin. Where does he live? Arctic. Correct. And now we have a clownfish. Ocean. Here we go. Polar bear. Arctic. Yep. Barn owl. Woodlands. Very good. What about the snake? Woodlands. Ooh, here we go. And the seahorse. Ocean. Okay. Arctic fox. Well, that's right in the name, isn't it? Arctic. Blottlenose dolphin. Ocean, of course. It wouldn't be in the woodlands. That would just be silly. Now we have a brown bear. Woodlands. We have a rabbit. Woodlands. Leopard gecko. Since he doesn't live where it's cold, lizards would die where it's too cold. And we know he doesn't live in the ocean. We're going to have to do woodlands, which means I'm making a group of five. And now the green iguana. Okay, what about the California mountain king snake? Woodlands, yep. Bull shark in the ocean. What do we got next? Oh, the brown field mouse, definitely in the woodlands. And then we have our robin and our rooster. I don't know if I'd put the rooster in the woodlands, but since he doesn't fit into these other two categories, we're going to stick him there anyway. And look at that. Ooh, two groups of five. That makes that easy to count. And now we have our whale. Make another group of five in the oceans. And our sea turtle. And last but not least, the baby harp seal who lives in the Arctic. Okay, very good. Now we have another beautiful table. Now you might see tables with tallies in them like this. But there's another way that you might see a table with just plain numbers in them. So sometimes, and I'm noting that I have four tallies here, sometimes people don't put in tallies. They just write the whole number so they would have a four here or a 10 in this column and no tallies. 
get rid of those. And I'm just going to put a 10. And sometimes, here we go, let's get rid of these. And let's just put the number six because that's how many there were. All righty, there's our new table. And this time, instead of tallies, we've put in numbers. Let's take a look at this table and answer some questions about it. How many categories do you see on our table? The categories have the names in them. They tell you what is going where. So how many do we see? One, two, three, you're right. Three categories on this table. How many animals all together? Well, 10 plus 6 is 16, and I know that 6 plus 4 is 10. Oh, wait, 10 plus 10 is 20. There we go, 20 animals all together. How many more woodland animals were there than ocean animals? So you can do a couple different things for this. You could subtract and do 10 minus 6. That's going to give you the difference here. That's going to tell you how many more woodland animals there were. And 10 minus 6 is 4. Or you could count up from 6 to 10 to see how many more you would need in order to make this many. So 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Oop. Four. No matter what I do, I get four. Good. So there are four more woodland animals than ocean animals. I have another question for you. How many less Arctic animals were there than ocean animals? You could figure that out a couple different ways. You could subtract six minus four, which is two. Or you could count up from four to six. Four five, six. Oh gee, I got two. Okay, so there were two less Arctic animals than ocean animals. Very good job. Hey, thanks for joining me today for math as we learned a little bit about tables and keeping track of things or data with the use of tables. Now I'd love for you to please complete the activity that I have attached to this video. Thanks for coming to learn math with me today. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.